Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime, and I want to just say, Happy freaking New Year. It's 2022. It's our first Monday of the year. This year brings so many promises here for Nintendo fans and gamers all over. It's looking to be a massive year for Nintendo Switch just based on the games we already know. And on top of that, we know PlayStation 5 is supposed to be having its biggest year yet. Obviously last year was not that big of a year for it, but there's supposed to be major exclusives, at least like three of them or something coming this year. That's really exciting. And yeah, Xbox Game Pass and the Series X is going to probably after Halo Infinite last year, obviously, kind of hit the ground running here for 2022. So it's looking like it's going to be a great year for gamers across the spectrum. Maybe even PC gamers as well. We'll have to see what happens there. So before we get into what we got to talk about today, because we got some big news stories to talk about today and kind of a new segment that we might do on Mondays. We'll kind of see uh, if it warrants a Monday segment every week. But uh, before we get into all of that news, I want to remind you that, hey, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet and you've been wondering wishy-washy on it, I don't know. All I know is from now through January 27th, one lucky brand new subscriber is walking away with $100 in cash. Monday, woo boop, making it rain around here, that's right. But I did forget all of you loyal subscribers either. We still have our typical monthly giveaway going on right now with three copies of Pokemon Legends. Arceus to enter, all you gotta do is head down into the description and click on that viral sweep link. It's also gonna be linked in the pinned comment as well. Also, you know what, screw it. Uh, I will give away, I don't know, let's say a $50 eShop gift card to somebody down in the comments if this video can hit seven. 100 likes and screw it we'll make it 250 dollars eShop gift cards if it can hit a thousand all right that being said let's actually get into the news i got my notes here i got my trusty phone oh yeah that's right shimigami tensei 5 that's our first story because we got official sales data for Shin Megami Tensei 5 from Atlas. This is really exciting stuff. Let me read the exact quotes here and then I'll tell you the sales data and why it's so important. So from Atlas says, Shin Megami Tensei 5 was released simultaneously worldwide and it got off to a good start, selling over 800,000 copies in total. Thank you very much for your support. 2022, we'll start with the remastered version of P4U2 Persona 4 Arena Ultimax in March and the release of 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim for the Nintendo Switch in April. We are also preparing a surprise new title that has not yet been announced. Also, the 25th anniversary of Persona, which started last year, will enter a new phase Please look forward to this. This all came directly from Atlas, and obviously there's some a bunch of news in there, right? They recapped some games coming up from Atlas for Switch, a brand new Nintendo Switch game not yet announced, and obviously teasing more stuff for Persona's anniversary. That's really exciting, and I have no idea what to expect here. Atlas makes a lot of really good games, so we'll have to wait and see. But I want to touch on that 800k mark, because they called it Good Sales. Shin Megami Tensei 5 is officially the best-selling game in the franchise. It has outsold the previous best-selling game, Shin Megami Tensei 4, by over 70,000 units. That's right. As of right now, this isn't good sales for Shin Megami Tensei. This is actually the best it's ever been. SMT 5 is now the best-selling Shin Megami Tensei game of all time and highly likely going to cross 1 million units when it's all said and done, which is just unheard of for this IP. So, yes, 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 all things are coming up Atlas right now. I wish Atlas would have went all in on Switch, you know, four years ago. But here we are heading into 2022 and we're finally going to get Atlas's best foot forward. And hopefully that continues. What's also nice about seeing these Shin Megami Tensei sales is they happened while we had Pokemon coming out and other games coming out during this time period. We had, see, Mario Party. So there's been a lot of other titles that people could have bought and Shin Megami Tensei still sold well. What does this prove? It doesn't matter the genre. It doesn't matter what your name is. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just trying to say that it doesn't really matter what kind of game you release on Switch. If you bring a high quality game to Switch, especially on timed exclusivity or as an exclusive in general, it's going to sell extremely well and third parties better be paying attention. Why they continually ignore the Switch platform is beyond me. All Nintendo has done with Switch is prove if you bring the games, the gamers will buy them. So keep bringing games, folks. It's just only logical. Like Project Triangle Strategy coming out in March this year. Yeah, probably going to sell pretty well. 
Next up, we learned that Sonic Frontiers was originally supposed to be a 2021 game, but then got delayed for quality purposes, which, surprise, surprise, a Sonic game was having quality issues. You know, I guess at least they admitted to it this time. That being said, let's get to the exact quotes from Sonic Stadium. Originally, it was planned to be released on this year, the 30th anniversary of Sonic, but we have postponed the release for a year in order to further brush up the quality. Not only for this title, but during the development phase, we have been steadily conducting analysis to improve the quality of the title before release, such as introducing game testing based on external evaluations, and we have a feeling that it will become a good game and have high expectations for it. For the pricing strategy, we feel that we are at a point where we need to rethink. For example, for the new Sonic game, as we are focusing on quality and spending certain amounts of money on development, we think it is important to maintain the price by maintaining the value of the IP at a high level, rather than simply lowering the price at early stage to increase the number of unit sales. Back in the day, it used to be like every year there was a new Sonic game, and as a result of that, there was a number of times, because of that rushed production schedule, the quality of the games wouldn't quite be where they really needed to be. A few years ago, we actually said, hey, there's going to be a change going forward. We're going to put probably more time into things as we go forward, and that's going to mean that you have to wait longer between trailers or announcements. And we know that's kind of annoying sometimes, because you just really want news. But that's where we are now, and we think that the patience hopefully will be worth it in the end. Now, there's a lot of hopefully and maybe, it doesn't sound like a lot of confidence in your product, but it is good that they recognize they had a development issue where they were rushing products and they're trying to do away with that and take more time. And also, they seem to be warning you it's going to be a $60 product and they might stay at $60 for quite some time like Nintendo games do. Uh, I'm not really surprised there. But again, if the game is really great, it can justify doing that. Uh, and Nintendo fans will lap it up. So might other companies. I think they're also preparing for the idea that on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X is probably going to launch at $70 as those prices start to become slowly standard on those next generation platforms. So I think they're just trying to prepare people for when the official price is revealed. This isn't going to be a $30, $40, $50 game. It's going to be full priced on each given platform. Obviously, Switch doesn't do $70 games, so I would be highly surprised if it released at $70 on Switch without it being a special edition or something. So anyways, yeah, um, I want to know, obviously, where your hype level is given this new news about Sonic Frontiers. Are you cautiously optimistic? Are you still thinking it's going to be a flop? Or do you believe them when they say they're actually taking their time and investing quite a bit of money. I think what's interesting is that just now they're taking outside people the game test. You didn't think it would have been a smart idea to have external game testing before now? That's kind of weird. Uh, I felt like that's, you know, based on my experience anyways, it's fairly standard. Yeah, you have your internal QA testers, but you always have some external ones to remove any, you know, bias towards the company. But hey, uh, it is what it is. We need to move on to our new segment. And this segment, you know, you might say isn't really that new, but it is because I've never labeled it this way. So this is that segment where you need to grab your tinfoil hats, back the truck up. Yes, it's a rumor segment, but we're, it's a very specific type of rumor segment. We're going to call this the Twitter Claimed Insiders of the Week Report. Uh, we got two different supposed insiders on Twitter talking again you don't got to believe anything they say. And yes, one of our, do we call him a friend? At least one of our regulars uh, is part of this. You guys know in Samus Hunter, but we have some others in there as well. Um, yeah, welcome to this section. And we're going to kind of segment it by who is saying what and what they're talking about. And this first section deals with Pokemon. So if you want some Pokemon news, well, I got some news for you, at least if you believe rumor mills, or at least you want to believe them. I don't know. I will say this about Samus Hunter's uh, next two segments here. I've already been trepidatious on her lately based on stuff that happened last year. But then since I said those things, she ended up getting another handful of things correct. So uh, we're just going to go with labeling this what it is. This is your Twitter claimed insiders of the week report. All right. So for Pokemon, she said the following. 
Let's start with Pokemon news. The Pokemon company has several things planned for 2022. Legends Arceus is on its way soon. We will get more news about it in a preview that will present the gameplay loop and mission based structure similar to Monster Hunter but with a greater emphasis on exploration. There will be some promotion alongside the game like I know they have planned a board for Tetris 99 and I know that originally there were plans for a demo of the game but I don't know if COVID impacted its production. The team used every day of its time to polish the game and I don't know if they had the time to create a demo with a dedicated mission in order to preview the new gameplay. It was planned for show floors but with the physical events cancelled these plans were changed. I don't rule out its arrival, but I have no recent news on that. For fiscal year 2022, the Pokemon Company will release another mainline game in the series. A trailer for it should arrive by June, but it's possible some teasers will arrive in the months before. More updates are expected for some titles in the coming months, including Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, Legends, and more. New spin-offs are also coming from mobile and console. I don't rule out that we might see some Detective Pikachu related stuff. These are the Pokemon Company's general plans as of today. In the coming weeks and months, I will try to keep you updated. I will talk about Nintendo in the coming days as well. This is obviously, you know, take it for what it is, guys. Don't necessarily believe it. Don't necessarily rule it out. Um, I've already talked about how I actually personally expect there to be another mainline game, whether it's Let's Go or New Generation or something happening this winter. I know some people think I'm crazy for thinking that, but I do think that that's why we're getting Legends Arceus now, because we're going to have that then. I could be wrong, but you guys let me know your feelings on this moving forward. I don't know. I mean, this is just stuff floating out there. Some of it's pretty obvious. Oh, they're going to promote Legends Arceus soon. Duh. Oh, there might be a demo, but then maybe not because that demo wasn't actually meant for us. It was meant for show floors, but then there was never going to be show floors and nothing was ever announced as an in-person event last year. So why the hell would they even be working on a demo? I'm really confused about that. And this is just generally what happens when Samus Hunter talks about things. She mentions things that can't be proven or disproven in the first place. And then she has some very specific stuff, which sometimes is true and sometimes isn't. So we'll just have to wait and see. Um, yeah, she's got a good track record with some of this stuff but uh yeah she has one more thing to say and that is about a nintendo direct and this is sort of exciting so let's talk about that she goes i know that there are a lot of people that are eager to find out when the next nintendo direct is scheduled well i'm hearing some announcements scheduled and launch period for games that right now makes me confident that it should arrive before the last february direct on 217. interesting in the coming days, I will go into some more detail explaining some of the announcements and motivations, but I don't rule out that it could also arrive in January. There are announcements that are usually scheduled for two months before launch that fall in late March. Now, her bad broken English aside on some of that stuff, because I think I know what she was trying to say, like she wasn't talking about prior or like February's or guaranteeing there would be a, a, a one coming up. I, she's just referencing like, you know, February directs, I think in 012 and 17, doesn't really matter. Here is what does matter. We're getting a Nintendo Direct probably in the next 50 days. And why are we getting a Nintendo Direct in the next 50 days? Because that's traditionally when Nintendo does Directs to start the year. I'm still of mind we're not going to get a Nintendo Direct before Legends Arceus comes out. I think Nintendo's going to want to give that at least its time its marketing run from the pokemon company and then they'll want to advertise all the things they got coming in february march april and june uh so yeah that's when i think we can expect one probably in the first couple of weeks of february but i could be wrong i think it's a pretty safe bet to say there will be a direct coming up and she doesn't really give us any information on that just that she knows about some things that she's not telling us right now because she's going to spread it out to other days because this is just what she does she doesn't give you everything at once she gives you supposedly what she knows knows over the course of many days probably to maintain her own relevance and popularity i don't know personally if i was an insider and i had inside information that i knew i couldn't get in trouble for revealing i would just give it to you all right away but you know what i am not somebody who cares about being popular for stuff that might be made up so let's get into the next part of the rumor bit this comes from leaky panda who just like samus hunter and all the other people on twitter sometimes they're right sometimes they're wrong and this person actually gives us game names, so that's exciting. Let's get into what Leaky Panda had to say. New games expected to be revealed this year? Heard of, and he's referencing that he's heard of, from Nintendo. A Xenoblade side game, 
that's action and adventure. Rogue Squadron 4 by developer Crytek. A Mario Kart 10 slash Crossroads, and he's been exposed to both names, unsure of which one is final, but it does feature multiple IP and a Pikmin title uh, developed by Next Level Games. Remember, these are all Nintendo games, so it's very interesting that Rogue Squadron specifically is going to be a Nintendo Switch game. Uh, new games expected to be revealed this year. I've heard of, and this, these are just from different developers. Gundam Breaker 4, Pokken Tournament 2 as a Nintendo Switch exclusive, Clona Reverie as a Nintendo Switch console exclusive, from Koei Tecmo, Ninja Gaiden title, and Age of Sigmar Warriors, which will be an Xbox console exclusive on Xbox Game Pass, and then Capcom for Necropolis, an FPS with a new IP. Obviously, there's some exciting stuff in there. Um, this is maybe the most exciting we talked about, at least in terms of what we want to happen hello rogue squadron 4 on switch uh the mario kart 10 crossroads whatever that people have been speculating about for a while like these are exciting things almost too good to be true but then golden eyes going to xbox we're getting banjo kazooie this month on the Nintendo switch online we got sora and super smash Bros. we're getting splatoon 3 breath of the wild a semi-open world pokemon legends arceus game uh we're getting another uh you know Mario plus Rabbids game of Sparks of Hope, a Project Triangle strategy. We're supposed to get Gollum this year, which is like a next-gen, cross-gen game coming to all platforms, including Switch. Um, guys, there's a lot of unbelievable things that we're supposedly already officially getting this year. Sonic Frontiers, Open World Sonic, what the hell? Like, guys, my mind is just fried at the moment on all the things we know about, and then the things we don't know about sound just as exciting. So... We'll see if any of this ends up true this year. Kind of a, you know, it'd be weird if we didn't kick off 2022 with some rumors. So we'll try to make this maybe the Monday segment. Uh, I don't want to talk about rumors like all the time. I know you guys are used to seeing rumors on my channel and stuff like that and, and leaks. And I'm not saying that we won't talk about them on other, uh, at other opportunities, uh, but only when they are deemed worthy to talk about. I think Monday is going to be kind of like our overreaction Monday style thing where, hey, we're going to just grab all the bullshit from the weekend and or even from the past week that we didn't talk about rumor wise chuck it in this video and move on with our day and that's all the ones i could find i'm sure you guys can find some other bs or non-bs rumors out there as well let me know if you enjoy having a specific day of the week segment to kind of throw up the twitter bullshit or potentially true rumors of the week anyways folks thank you so much for tuning in and i'll catch you in the next video